I am two years, 69,000 miles and 48 states into this Ram ProMaster camper van. It is the ultimate tool for having a fantastic weekend adventure. It's also a bit of a money pit and the projects never end. I like doing the projects though. It's kind of fun and uh, let's get a few done today. And by today, I mean over the next three weeks as everything comes in the mail. First and foremost, I love this rear view video camera thing. I couldn't see out of the back of my van if I didn't have it. And yet, <laughs> two years in, it's starting to have some problems. So of course, I bought a new one. And the main benefit of the new one versus the old one is the forward facing dash cam. You can see this here. This dash cam is kind of set into place. This isn't even a good view. This is how I would normally be driving. And uh, there's a lot of glare on the screen. It's just really not that good. So the new one that I bought has a separate, somewhere in this mess has a separate camera for you to mount front facing. Here it is to actually be 24 seven mounted on the front in a good spot without glare. So if something happens, you know what? Two years of driving, 69,000 miles, I've not had one interesting thing happen that was recorded by the front camera or the rear camera. This saves to an SD card. So if something happens behind me or in front of me, I would be able to upload it and show it to the cops or show it on YouTube or Reddit. But that has not happened once, which is just boggles my mind. This is gonna be a little bit of a tough, uh, <laughs> so much stuff, so much wiring. The theme of this video is getting in over my head and uh, figuring out if I can sink or swim. So I think this will all be worth it if the new camera is better just by a little bit than the old camera. Currently, if someone is flying up behind me, it's very tough to see them coming at a high rate of speed on the camera because it's kind of like a GoPro where it just doesn't show that unless people are a lot closer to me. Ugh. Okay, so this is good. It has the same type of wiring as the other one. So I'm just gonna swap it and see if it works. We're just gonna fast forward through this little part here because I chased my tail for two days about this wiring and the camera. All I needed to do was swap out the old camera for the new camera. But when I did that and I was testing, when the van door is open all the way, it just messes with the connection enough to blank out the camera. It's so weird, but when the van door is completely closed and I'm driving down the road and you're hitting bumps, there's no problem. The camera never cuts out and never turns off. So it's a very bizarre little edge case that just got me all tied up into knots. I got it fixed. Everything's been good since then. Camera, good. So now after all that, we need to test it out and I'm gonna start my van up. And you hear that beautiful chime that just goes and goes and goes and goes forever. We're gonna get rid of that with a little seatbelt extender thingy. You would think after two years in the van, you would get used to the seatbelt chime. I hate it. To this day, every single day, every single time I turn on the car, every time I just wanna drive around at a campsite or a little parking lot where I'm getting in the car and I'm driving, it's okay. I'm going to wear my seatbelt. I always wear my seatbelt. There doesn't need to be this horrific chime all the time. So watch this. I'm gonna put my little seatbelt thing in there. I'm gonna start the van. No more chime. It's perfect. It's fantastic. Oh, I'll still wear my seatbelt, but if I don't want to, I don't have to. Entrusting my life and my wife's life <laughs> to a $10 piece of plastic on Amazon might not be the best choice, but it's come to this. It has come to this. Turn right onto North Point Street, then turn left after Hewitt Deli. So far, so good with the road test. I am hugely impressed with the rear view camera and the size of the cars behind me. On my previous camera, it was kind of a warped sense of how close cars were. And very often, especially on the freeway, a car would be zooming up behind me and the car was so small on the camera that you didn't even notice. And then all of a sudden, like you wanna get over and you're blocking that person that's zooming past you. This is a much more perfect, well not perfect, but a much better representation of how far the car is behind me. If I look in my mirror, the car is about the same size as in the video screen. So I'm very, very happy with this. This is awesome.
And then the other really cool thing about switching to this one is having the more permanently mounted front facing dash cam. Previously, the dash cam was mounted on this. So anytime you wanted to adjust your mirror, it would mess up the dash cam. Now, this thing is always pointed, it's always fixed, it's gonna be fine. There's still the glare. You can totally see the glare from my uh, hands and stuff, but much, much better than the previous one. Now, if an accident happens, I think I'll be uh, a little bit better covered. All right, time for another little upgrade. I don't like this phone holder that much at all. These little things are not that great. It slips out quite a lot. If there's big temperature swings on the windshield, this will just fall down all of a sudden randomly. Otherwise, it's a very strong suction cup. And then if you wanna adjust this and kind of turn your phone sideways, it's super hard to make. Look at, I'm like loosening this thing up all the way and I still can't rotate it left and right. It should be able to rotate. So a lot of cons, it's lasting me two years, but it's time for a replacement. And this is what I'm gonna switch it up with. This brand is uh, pretty popular. I've used it several times in several different cars. It's a good one. Whoa, that thing's stuck on there too fast. I got, I got it in the wrong direction. Oh no, abort. <laughs> it's not gonna be quite a great phone holder. I didn't realize it was do or die on the first application of the old suction cup. Holy moly. Okay, second try. Very simple and solid. Toss the phone in, it stays in. Hopefully this isn't too much leverage. Then if you wanna watch a movie while you're sitting in the front seat with your seat belt off, going 90 miles an hour down the highway, you can do it. This is kind of a cool little feature. It's got this sticker on it that's magnetized and the back of this is a magnet. So you can actually just kind of keep your cable a little better organized. I highly suggest these little things. These are like little double-sided tape sticky dots for any kind of cable organization in your house, in your car, at work. These things are so nice. They keep cables in line. The next change on the menu is trying to get my van stereo to sound better. I already have a nice head unit. I already replaced the stock speakers with aftermarket speakers, but I kind of cheaped out on those. So first step, very, very easy. I replaced the upgraded speakers with even more upgraded speakers that have better Watts, RMS, whatever that is. So the new speakers are in. Now I'm going to get in way over my head once again with trying to install an amplifier to try to get the speakers to sound better. Is this even, uh, I don't know. I, I, it's my last ditch effort to try to get some good sound in this van. I bought a wiring kit, so I'm not completely in over my head. I think this'll do it. It even has a nice diagram on the back for someone like me to follow along. Okay, there we go. Boom. I'll see you on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Okay, things are progressing right along. I kind of understand what's happening here, but man, not having the right tools for the job is just the worst. I'm kind of making it happen, but stripping these wires and setting them in is such a pain, but <sighs> we're moving forward. I've got it going some way, somehow. Uh, it's very theoretical though. This is just all hooked up with the wire showing. I've got it running. I could play it off my phone. The radio works. I just need to hide all these wires now and have it actually work on the other side of that. So I think I got to take a lot of panels off and run a lot of stuff. Oh boy. So I've got this whole thing torn apart to try to run some new speaker wire through here. But the more I think about it, why run new wire? If this wire goes over to here, I could clip it and then splice it. And then I'll just have a big bundle of a bunch of stuff that I need to figure out a pathway for. So I think that's the best uh, case scenario right now. Oh, yeah. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I've got my hole drilled. This is gonna run <laughs> seamlessly right up through there, I think. Oh, yes. Oh, we're in the home stretch. 
Oh man, lots of time, plenty of money. It was worth it. I love great audio. It's not the best ever, but it's really, really good. And it's way better than what I had Ah, oh, victory. My next little upgrade I have been hemming and hawing about forever because they're $100 and oh, I just don't know if it's gonna be worth it, but I went for it. These are little air vent inserts. So right now, if I turn my fan on, there is very little air being able to get sucked through all the little micro gaps and cracks in the van. So the fan has to work very, very hard. So I'm at 80% right now, and there's actually an audible noise, like it's sucking air, but in a bad way. If I crack that open, it sounds a lot different. You've got full airflow. So in order to get the makeup air we need, we flop this thing in, roll up the window, and voila, we've got air. Seems like it's on backwards. Yep, it was on backwards, I switched it out. It looks pretty nice from the outside, you can't, get into the van, but you can still let air in. Ich brauche Luft. I need air. Okay, here's the test. We're gonna turn it back on, 80%. It still sounds like it's sucking air about the same as it was <laughs> when everything was closed. Yeah, that's pretty good. I can feel the air coming in but obviously you can't run it at the high RPMs. So if it's like really hot in here or really stinky in here, or you really wanted to clear the air, you just gotta keep it low. Even running right now at 50%, it's still making that whining noise where it's like, I can't get enough air, I can't get enough air. There's definitely more airflow, not as much as I would like. I say the perfect solution is cutting another hole in the roof, putting another max air fan, because then you can run 100% in, 100% out, and you shouldn't have any problems. But even running at 30%, there's resistance. And honestly, there already is a lot of air movement in my van. I know that because when I sleep with all the windows rolled up and everything closed up, my windows never fog up. So <laughs> that means there's already a natural air exchange happening a lot more than I would like <laughs> because it means the van is always way too cold or way too hot depending on the conditions. Here's one I'm actually excited about. Custom cut floor mat to fit all the nooks and crannies. So it doesn't seem exactly perfect, but it's pretty close. And hopefully with time, things will just settle in and find their natural way. The normal floor, the ProMaster, has so many weird humps and bumps and cracks and squishy spots and crevices that just having a nice uniform piece of plastic over the top, I think it's gonna help. Here's an upgrade that I made to the van a few months ago and just never mentioned it in any videos. I upgraded to the three drawer Milwaukee Packout versus the old style Packout. The other one was taller as well. But you know, with this one, you have to open it up and then dig through everything. But with this one, it's very secure with this bar here. You have your tools in drawers, very easy to, to access instead of having to dig through and move stuff out a lot better. And of course, this whole thing will pop out and you can move it around and put it somewhere else and swap it in for another one if you want to. Very modular. I've gone even deeper down the rabbit hole now. I've got some tweeters installed. <laughs> I had to do it. I just had to do it once I realized the factory tweeters were utter garbage. So now uh, let's see if I can put this all back together. It sounds okay. I definitely have a ground loop going. I can hear a whine every time I hit the accelerator. So I think I need to change the ground from the battery terminal to somewhere on the body. In the process of trying to get to the tweeters, I actually broke this piece. I didn't realize you had to take the whole thing off and unscrew it. Then I had this piece floating in here <laughs> and then I stopped short at like a red light and the piece just went flying in here. So now I had to take this apart and I see it. It's just laying nicely right there. Yeah, super glue time. Well, this has not gone as planned whatsoever. I was gonna try to like drill this hole out and put the tweeter in there. And uh, that is pretty much the sad state of the affairs right now, blown out beyond belief. Uh, so I got it in there, but it's total garbage. So, hmm. 
Okay, a few hours later now, and I'm starting to figure out what I need to do. I'm just cutting a hole in this bad boy. This one is finished. Even though there's a little gap down there, it looks a little ugly. Way better than whatever I thought I was going to do. So I'm just going to keep chipping away with my little utility knife here. Shave it out, shave it out. Keep testing if the tweeter fits in or not. And once it fits, we're good to go. Holy moly, I think this is actually going to work here. Pull it through. Snap it in. If you see that sock in the background, <laughs> that's, I was going to just put like a black sock. I wasn't going to have this. Oh, it would have been so hokey, so garbaggio, but uh, some way, somehow I salvaged it. I've been working on this video piece by piece for more than a month off and on now. And the whole reason I started this journey was because I was going to get better lights on the van. You can't really replace the headlights in the van. They're like, you have to super glue them in if you like try to take them out and put better LEDs in. So I was gonna get a brush guard, put better lights on there. The lights came like a month ago, but the brush guard that I was gonna mount the lights to has been in transit for a month now. It hasn't come. So I'm gonna have to call it here. And I did a lot of cool upgrades to the van, but there's more to come. I'm gonna have to <laughs> wait for that brush guard to come, put that on, show it, because I think the lights, having big, big bright lights on country roads or deserted highways is so important. I've had so many weird little animal encounters, late night stuff running across the road that it's well, well worth it. So that was fun. Thanks for uh, building with me. <laughs> I'll see you on the trail. Hey, before you go, one thing, hit the like button. It actually matters in the YouTube universe for some reason. I think watching the videos to the end, like you are doing right now, actually matters more, but it all adds up, it all helps the channel. And if you wanna help the channel even more, I've got my extended cuts on Patreon. Every writing video I do almost ends up being a 45 minute extended cut where you can sit on the trainer, do your trainer ride, watch the extended cut. I have hundreds of videos over the past five years of all my world travels so if you want to be on the trainer for a hundred hours, you'll never run out of content. It's three bucks a month over on my Patreon page. It supports the channel much more than you would ever know. I've also got my high-end components company up and running, Trail One. Everything's in stock right now. If you need a hop up for your bike, new set of handlebars, a stem or grips, we're adding new products. Every couple of months or so, you'll see something really good coming from Trail One. And then we're gonna start the give back. We're gonna start making videos about giving back to the trails. You're gonna see that whole story unfold. I cannot wait. And of course, thanks to Ibis for being a fantastic sponsor of this channel, day in and day out.